Hi, I'm Morton Gans Pedersen, and you're watching Rovers Chat. Hello and welcome back to the Rovers Chat YouTube channel. We're back another match preview. We've had a rare midweek off, which I think we both enjoyed. And now we're back to preview Rovers trip to Hull, as you can see. I'm jammed by Dom. How are we doing, Dom? I'm great, yeah. And um, I was losing track of the games. I, I, every time we do these uh, match previews, I'd be like, who are we playing just before the game? <laughs> just to give like a bit of a, a note uh, or two beforehand. But yeah, it's got, I'm glad to be on again. It's been a while, like we said before. It's been uh, at least like three or four days since we spoke to each other, which is, in the championship terms, a long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I don't think we've gone like that all season, have we really? Other than, well, even the international break, we're on a bit, but we're back, like we mentioned. Uh, before I start, I just want to say, on behalf of myself, Dom, thanks to everyone for uh, helping us reach 3,000 subscribers. Been after it for a bit. Notice it went after the, who did we play last time out? Birmingham. Good prep there. After the yeah. Birmingham win, obviously, <laughs> you know, really appreciate it. And, you know, if you want to keep subscribing, keep liking the videos, do all that stuff, we really appreciate it. But Dom will start, as we always start with a previous game, a win over Birmingham, three wins in a row for Rovers as well, you know, after wins over Middlesbrough and Sunderland. What did you make of the win? Yeah, it reassured, uh, reassuring the first half, wasn't it? And it, it was obvious that Rovers were always going to concede in the second half, make it the Rovers' way, you know, 2-1. And I thought Birmingham... Uh, we're better than most people thought. I think that we were just going to turn them over after they scored, after we scored our second goal, um, and we're just lucky that we've got a international quality goalkeeper, you know, in Kaminsky, um, and he did fully deserves to go to the World Cup just for that performance alone. Yeah, absolute class, weren't it? I don't know how he's done it in a week of. You know, the middles were save at first and then that Birmingham one is basically four points at least, hasn't he, that he's won us and, you know, probably more because Birmingham probably should have won the game almost. It felt like that at one point that a goal were coming for them and then we just hit them. But, yeah, you know, we get the win. Rovers have been on the end of them games where we've dominated before and not won. So it's nice to get a win, nice to get one on the board and a third one actually in a row, five at home. We seem to love it at the moment, so... You know, we'll see how we go going forward. Obviously, you know, we always look at team news on these previews. And again, for the first four or five weeks of the season, even six, we weren't really discussing much. And now we're constantly discussing. You know, we spoke off air about the right back options. Uh, Ryan Hedges is a doubt. Callum Britton might be back, but he's a doubt. And then it leaves us with, you know, a full centre back bunch, as you'd say, you know, with Ayala coming back and everything else. In terms of the right back, Dom, obviously Callum Britton's in pressure and Hedges has played there, which I don't think any of us expected before, but he's not done a bad job there, has he? Does it concern you with them two out at right back that Rovers will struggle in that position or you know, do we still have the adequate place to it? Because we saw Travis obviously play there earlier in the season. Yeah, and you you're forgetting Carter can also play there mm -hmm. at right back as well. So I think that we are we're in a position now, and we've said this a few times on this channel recently, that our depth in squad is something that we've not we're not used to, especially at the back. And um, we we used to uh, Neam Bay being out the last few seasons, and then we're we're done for, aren't we? We got we've got Bennett or whatever, <laughs> and and then like maybe a Buckley who's not you know used to the the. I think played there at Brentford away. I think in my yeah, God. I do. Um, him inside out. But but right now we're, we're looking minutes. at yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we've got Carter. We could put it right back. We got Travis there. Obviously, Buckley can be there. Morton's played there at, at, at times this season. We've got much strength in depth this season, and it's something that I'm not particularly worried about this season, unless we have someone maybe. Up front, that could be, you know, like if we lose Gallagher and Brereton Diaz, then we're looking yeah. a bit weak. But other than that, I think in terms of depth, there shouldn't be a worry this season. No, I've been the same actually. I've kind of sat there and I'm like, well, if one centre back's missing, we've got another one. If another one misses, we've got another player to come in. You know, Jack Vale got his new contract during the week, which, you know, yeah. we've not spoke about. So credit, long, for, really. well, credit to our academy, isn't it? Like, we're looking at, yeah. the, like, say, Jack Vale and um, Jake Batty as well this 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 week as well, which um, was sort of lingering a little bit. And obviously we've got Ashley Phillips as well. Like it, it, 
it's a credit to our academy how much depth we got this season because finally the the, the few players that have the last couple of seasons that we could maybe push forward are there in the squad now um whether it's our fault or not um in terms of how little we've you know purchased in terms of transfers and that but it, it is like a testament to the, the the category one and all the sort of coaches and Greg and John Dahl pushing them forward this season. Yeah, it's always nice to see, isn't it? And obviously Adam Wharton getting his first goal in the last game that, you know, we mentioned on the review and the match action for that. Obviously Hull, you know, the horse on Saturday, good record there in, re- in previous years, except for last year's shambles, as Bradley Dak described it, but we won't get into the uh, the politics of all that. That kicked off a few uh let's say a few arguments said at least between the two fan base but you know <laughs> barring that Rovers are really good there I think it was Mowbray's best ground in terms of record at Rovers out of the ones he'd been regularly you know we seem to enjoy there we see I remember Jordan Rhodes goal uh, a late header there and uh, that must be 2014 <laughs> the not... season under Bayer. right uh, okay. <laughs> and then the, the Bradley Dack goal there the Derek Williams header there so, you know, yes. some good, we've had some good away days there. Uh, you know, F off Derek. Of course. I forgot about that. I can't <laughs> believe that's a bit I missed. <laughs> Obviously, the F off Derek bit as well. The uh, clip that went everywhere for <laughs> months and still goes around now. But, you know, we'll look at Hull's how far this season. Started off really well, you know, made a lot of summer signings, which I think we picked up on in the preview as well, and everyone kind of picked up on. You know, you got your likes of Nathan Baxter in there on loan. Uh, Shabby Simmons, Harvey Bale. Obviously, they lost King Lewis Potter in the summer, but still brought in that many players. Too fan. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Sewi, who I think everyone That's really great. shocked by that he went to Hull. Yeah, Woods, uh, Dharma Jayori, not the Wolves one, obviously. Cyrus Christie, you know, all these players. Estupan, who starting ahead of the <laughs> Is that the one you were thinking? And, and Pel Pelcas as well. He's he's Pelcas, the one. Yeah. He, he, him and him and Estupinan. Um, Estu I spent about half an hour. He's got a brother that's at Brighton right now as a left back. Um, that he, he's he, him and Petcas and uh, Jean Michel Seri at the three. I'd say that would be the key for all this season. And all of them came in the summer. Um, if if we keep them quiet. We're good, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, well, I, that's it, isn't it? You look at, I say these teams, and I don't mean that in a bad way at all, but, you know, sides that maybe aren't at the right end of the table, yet they might do by the end of the season, but you look at these and you're a bit more, it's the key players you look at stopping, isn't it? It's not like certain sides up there, like Sheffield United and, and neighbours down the road that you think, well, they're full of quality, it's more the one or two players you kind of stop. And you, you look at the season so far, I mean, started really well, beat Bristol City, drew with Preston, everyone drew with Preston, uh, beat Norwich, drew at Burnley, and then lost 5-2 to West Brom, got back to winning ways against Coventry, and then it kind of just went downhill for them. Five losses in a row, then they beat Wigan, then they lose two in a row, then they win the last two, and they've no manager. And they haven't had a manager for a bit after Advelazi left in a... 30th of September it was, so, you know, basically a month. They won't have a manager by the time we play them by the sound of it. So, it's a weird one, isn't it, Dom? It's not often you go that long without a manager in this league and they're obviously trying to get their ideas right. I think yeah, Liam and Senior, it, it, was it? it? Uh, yeah, he's linked there, but obviously Andy, yeah. Andy Dawson. Is it Andy Dawson? Yeah, I think it's Andy Dawson. They, they've, won, they've won the last two games, haven't they? They won, they won away yeah. at Rotherham, won away at Blackpool, and they've done a similar thing that we've done the last few games. They've not drawn in last eight or nine, something like that, it's, uh, from looking at the, the recent results. Yeah, since um, the Burnley game. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, <laughs> it's not, I don't think it draws on the card, is it? No, not a chat. Well, it probably is knowing Rovers. We love ending <laughs> every sort of trend, don't we? Now we've got rid of this win-loss, win-loss. We know what we're like. But what we'll do now, uh, obviously every show we get the opposition from preview, where we're joined by Amp from the To Hullaback podcast. We discussed the Tiger season so far, the manager search, and everything related to Hull. So check that out here, and then we'll be back again for our predictions. Predicted it, I am predicted score. And as you can see, I'm joined by Ant from the To Hull and Back podcast. How are we doing, Ant? I'm all right, mate. You? Yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Well, really appreciate having you on. If anyone wants to check out the To Hull and Back podcast, I'll leave all the links below 
pretty easy to find it. Twitter, is it YouTube as well? Yeah. YouTube everywhere. That's perfect. I'll leave everything below. Just go and check them out. So I'm obviously whole season. Now, I remember at the start of the season, a lot of people optimistic about Hull's chances. I saw some of the signings they made really impressed, you know, without being disrespectful to Hull, the signing of Serie. I thought, where on earth did that come from? You know, how's the season been in your eyes? Because obviously you see it a lot different to, you know, people on the outside. Yeah, I think as a City fan, it's been quite an eventful season. I think because... Uh, you know, the last few years have been under your lambs and that and not seeing any form of investment in the side and just kind of limping over the line every season. I know we won the League One title, but, you know, the squad we had, that was a realistic possibility anyway. Um, obviously, got the new owner in, um, backed us well in the summer. We started the season well as well, you know, really good results. I think we were unbeaten in the first five games, sat joint top of the league or something like that. So, obviously, with when you partner the... The, the new takeover with good form and everyone gets a bit carried away and we're like, oh, we're going to win the league. Um, but then got, you know, a bit of a reality check and and, and lost something like six of the next seven uh, uh, without even scoring goals as well. It was, you know, it, it went from sort of euphoria to, to, to real genuine worry that this season could be a bit of an expensive relegation battle. Um, thankfully, recent results have kind of steadied that ship a bit. Um, I do think the previous manager, obviously, Shotter Avaladze, we sacked. Um, I just, he didn't really seem to fit um, the vision that, that that the owner's got with where he wants to take the club. Um, he didn't really know his best team. I know we've suffered a, a majorly with injuries, and we still are. Um, but, you know, as a manager, it's your job to get the best out of the team that you've got. And Shotter really wasn't doing that. You know, we were coming out of games where... Uh, we, we we could have played for four days straight and not look like scoring a goal and, and would have leaked another 20 in that time. And, you know, we're just, it, it, we're in that recovery phase at the minute. Obviously, Andy Dawson, interim manager at the minute, uh, won three of his six games. So he's at a 50% win rate at the minute. But more importantly is the performances are picked up. Uh, you know, we were losing games under Shotter, but we weren't playing well either. Whereas under Dawson, we have been playing well and we actually look like we're going to create chances. Still leaking goals, but looking a bit more organised and conceding less <laughs> than we were. So it, hopefully the season's sort of getting on track now. Um, we, we put ourselves in a decent enough position to kick on and hopefully leave ourselves in a healthy position for the World Cup. Yeah, and you mentioned obviously the change of manager. No permanent manager yet. Is there anyone you specifically want? You know, I've seen uh, Liam Rossini has been linked with a club seems to be the biggest link so far. Do you want him, you know, or is there someone else you want to take the uh, hot seat? Um, for me, there isn't, I, there isn't like one specific manager that I would look at and say, yeah, I really want this guy in. Um, for me, it's just anybody that's got any form of experience in, you know, the Championship League One. Um, hopefully not another gamble on a on a, on a a manager from abroad. Um, Liam Rosinia would be a good hire based on the fact that obviously he's been here as a player before um he knows the club he's he's loved by the fans he's got family in the area which was part of his chant um he can come in and he'll probably have Dawson involved in like his number two or in his coaching staff or something or other so he'll have the the the, the knowledge of the players and their strengths from him straight away and he's he's a very intelligent guy is Rosinia if you listen to him talk how he how he conducts himself in the media you know he's very astute he's very um well spoken and I think he he if Ajahn's choosing him as the manager, then his vision really does fit because, you know, the owners come out and said he's not going to rush and make an appointment um, because it needs to be right with the vision. Um, the, the whole reason Shotter got sacked was because they had discussions and, and their ideals weren't matched. Um, so if, if, if Rosini is favourite for the job, it means that he's coming and he's saying all the things that Ajahn wants to hear. He's obviously wanting to come in, win games, entertain the fans. And that's been, you know, the well-documented thing that he said on Sky Sports, where he said he'd rather lose uh, 3-2 than draw 0-0, which obviously points-wise doesn't make sense. But the, the point he was making was he wants the fans to come to games and be entertained, you know, not play out a boring 0-0 draw. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm optimistic. If, if I'd be happy with Rosinia. Um, I think the original plan was to get... Um, uh, he was just gone to Watford, but the, the owner had um, a, a, a motorbike crash in Istanbul uh, and couldn't come over to do the interview. And then we lost out and it sort of delayed things. So Dawson got a bit more time in the job than expected. But um, anyone with championship experience would be good for me, but but I'd love to have Rosie at the helm. Yeah, it just seems like a, a match made in heaven. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? You know, he had his time with Derby and, you know, he seems to be kind of that manager that just needs to break, doesn't he? So it'd be an interesting one to see how he does. 
obviously well backed as well by an owner who you know seems to enjoy putting money in like he has. Who's the players to watch for Hull this year? Because obviously uh, I might butcher his name. Is it Estepan? Estepinia. Yeah, yeah, he started Probably really well, didn't he? Oscar, he did. Yeah. He started really well. He's on. He's on eight goals, so he's joint top scorer in the league. Um, the, the thing about Estepinia is, is I think if you put him in a team like a Norwich or a Burnley that create the amount of chances they do every game, he'd get you 25, 30 goals a season. Um, with us. He, you know, he's, he's the kind of striker that's that's willing to work hard for his goals. If you look at his goals against Norwich, Coventry, he's literally just that kind of striker that puts himself in the right place. He'll score from like the six yard box. He's not going to score a worldie from the outside of the box, or he hasn't yet. Um, but he's he, he's the kind of player that always puts himself in a position to score, or he will press the defense to make a mistake and he'll score from them. So, he, in, in essence, he creates his own goals. Um, and he's not had much service this season, so it's exciting to think that you know. When results pick up and, and and the team gels a bit more and we start creating more chances, then he should score more. But the interesting thing is, the last two games we've played and won and scored seven goals, he was dropped for both of them. Uh, you know, Andy Dawson did quite a bold uh, team selection against Blackpool, where we essentially had five defenders and five midfielders, no striker, and it was like, well, what's going on? Where are the goals going to come from? Um, and we ended up scoring three. Uh, he played Ryan Longman up top, who's had quite a poor season. Um, uh, you know, it was there was there was a big problem with you know fans were jeering him off at Huddersfield away. Um, you know, performances were bad, but it was borderline sort of abuse at that point. And you know, fans are starting to f- feel a bit you know we've gone a bit too far with that. But he's come back, and it says a lot about his character and how he is as a person that he's come back and scored two and two now, uh, sort of playing as that lone striker. And you know, Dawson's done a bit of a masterclass there. I, I think he's pushed um, Regan Slater and Greg Doherty up as like attacking midfielders, supporting Pelkas and Longman. And we, we scored seven goals in two games. And, and without winning away all season, to win two away on the bounce like that was, uh, you know, it shows we, we've hopefully turned a corner in that sense. And the the Sari Woods partnership in midfield is sprouting very well. Uh, you know, they're both players that like to be in possession and dictate play. But in terms of players to watch out for, because I've, I've meandered a bit there, um, would be. Um, Greg Doherty's on form. You know, he's he he he'd not started all season. The last two games, he's been phenomenal. Um, arguments can be made that he's been the catalyst to the last couple of games. His addition in midfield, his work rate, and his endeavour. Uh, Ryan Longman's got two in two, looking very good. Uh, Jacob Greaves, um, you know, a lot of interest in in him from Middlesbrough in the summer, but we kept hold of him, signed a new year long term contract, and was actually deployed as a left back last couple of games and he's got a goal and assist the last game doing that. So another one who, who potentially has found a, a position that suits him a bit more. And, you know, the whole team's in form at the minute, but um, I think if you can isolate, I think our biggest danger man is going to be um, Seri. You know, you, if you give him time on the ball, he will control the game. So, you, you, you know, if, if a team presses him, he, he kind of struggles in that sense. He, he, he will lose the ball and give goals away. But, you know, it, on the other hand, he... If you give him time, then he will hurt you. Like he, he played 33 games for Fulham last season and they won the league. So, you know, he's not a bad player. Um, it was quite a coup, like you say, that we signed him. Um, a bit of a bit of a transfer story in that one because he, he, he changed his mind and went to Italy and then changed his mind again and came back to us. So quite happily we've got him. But yeah, he's been phenomenal for us so far. Seri, uh, finding his feet now and definitely probably our main man at the minute. Yeah, I think he's the one I worry about. You know, he's always talent. I mean, with Barcelona, we were in two years ago or something. Yeah, I think it was before he went to Fulham. I think they were going to, Barcelona wanted him. Um, and I think he ended up going to Fulham or something. Other. But yeah, if Barcelona are linked to you, you're not a bad player, are you? No, you're okay, aren't you? Not too bad. So, you know, what are your thoughts ahead of Saturday? How much have you seen at Rovers this year? I know we've not been, you know, maybe Sky's big pick of the season. There's been other teams that have been on regularly. But, you know, what do you expect from us? I've watched a couple of games. I think the one that sticks out for me was was your game against Blackpool. Um, I think what I like about Blackburn this season is um, you, you start, you're kind of doing what we did in the last few years where you've had to resort to bringing in some of your players from the youth academy. Um, and I think, you know, you've got a lot of young players in that team that have got a big future in the game. And the, the thing is with the Blackburn side at the minute for me is for 90 minutes, they're going to work hard. So if, if we're not, at the races for 90 minutes, then we could get punished. So we've got to match that work rate across the game to get something from the uh, from the game. Um, obviously, you sat in third. Um, 
season's going quite well. Um, we tend to do better against the better sides, which is a good thing. That's the slight form of optimism for us, and we're not on Sky, so that's good. Um, but no, this is a game where we've got to take our chances. Uh, we've got to get in front and have something to hold on to and be a bit more defensively astute because at the minute, you know, we've only had one clean sheet all season. Uh, worst defence in the country, uh, concede on average about two a game. So as a Blackburn fan, that's probably nice to hear. But as a Hull City fan, it's yeah. every time we every time we're watching the other team attack, we just you, there's dread that, that this ball's going up in the back of the net some way or another. And we're not very good at defending set pieces. So if you've got big physical players, then, then we're probably in for a bit of a problem. Well, you mentioned the uh, you know putting chance away. Rovers, you know, have given away quite a few chances this game. You know, I know people don't like XG, but it kind of shows every game that we're getting battered on it. Uh, and teams are getting chances. You know, a keeper made some in the last week. He's probably saved us four points. You will get your chances. And if you take them, you know, it'd be a different story. The final question, score prediction. You know, how do you expect the game will go? Do you think Hull are going to kind of dominate the ball? Or do you think they'll leave us to it? And what's your score prediction? Um, Possession-wise, I'm not sure. Because the last couple of games, we've actually been very good in possession. And I think that... Like I said, that addition of basically having a midfield five of um, Pelkis, Slater, Doherty, and then Woods and Siri sort of sitting deeper allows us to to have the ball comfortably. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that we have a bit more of the ball, especially being at home and trying to take the game to Blackburn. Um, but we are very susceptible on the break. So us having possession means absolutely nothing at all, really, because <laughs> we can have all the ball. You've got to do something with it. Um, we definitely don't clean sheet, uh, don't keep clean sheets. So we'll definitely concede at least one. Um, uh, for score prediction, you see, I've been, I've been changing my mind all week because the last couple of games say to me that it's going to be a positive result. Um, but I think we'll get a bit of reality check this game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in the middle and I'm going to say it's going to be a 1 1 draw. Yeah, we've not drawn yet, so I don't know whether yeah. we'd take a draw. We're a strange side. We, we're kind of all waiting for that draw, but who knows when it'll come. We'll probably keep a, it going. A for draw a away from home, I think, when you're in third, it's not too bad, is it? I think, you know, no, it's keeping, not. And you're in good uh, form as well. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, if you take the last 10 games out of consideration, we, we've won three of the last six, so uh, we're not doing too bad, I suppose, uh, but... If you extend it a bit, we've only won three of that, the last 11. So <laughs> whichever way you want to look at it, I suppose, which gives you the most optimism. Yeah, it's a strange one. But thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate having you on. If anyone wants to check out the To Hull and Back podcast, I'll leave all the links below, but we'll head back into our preview now. And there we have it. Thanks to Ant for joining us. You know, really appreciate it. We'll leave all the links to To Hull and Back below. But now it's time for our predicted outside. The bit I enjoy on the show, we've gone for it, as you'll see on your screen. Kaminsky, Nett, Carter, Ayala, Hyam, Scott Wharton, Harry Pickering. A midfield three of Morton, Adam Wharton, Louis Stravis and Gallagher and Burton Diaz up front. Uh, we've discussed the right back situation. Obviously, with Ayala coming back in, we've kind of moved Carter to right back. Do you have the confidence in Carter to do that role well? Yeah, absolutely. When he was at right wing back at, uh, against Watford, I know it's at home, but he looks so comfortable there and he he doesn't look like a a boy in a man's team anymore he looks like he's ready for this level doesn't he i think um i think that was the rest of the team basically made itself like you said like i I, I, I literally wrote the same team as you left them two positions out asked you if ayala was fit you said yes i was like cool i'll put a carter right wing back then (laughs) it made it easy (laughs) That's it. Three wins in a row. You know, the midfield three seems to work so well. We're away from home as well, which I think kind of boosts the reasoning from midfield three. So that's what we've gone for. It's pretty self-explanatory in terms of performances. You know, everyone has performed for the last two or three games when they've been in the squad. So it's only right to keep the place, isn't it? And, you know, let us know below what team you'd like to see. Do you want to see us keep the same? Do you think we should go for a front three rather than a Just uh, a quick, a just a quick one. Just a quick one on that. Um, are you tired of the Dak ch- chat? Because I feel like you've been speaking about it every single game. How, like, I feel like, is it just a foregone conclusion now he's going in January? I do think he'll be off. I think I am tired of it. The thing I don't get, and, you know, I've said every show that we could do an hour show on it, and we probably will. Probably some up for the World Cup, but I know there'll, there'll be comments below about Dak. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I think what you find is, I look, I always look at these plays in terms of we, 
forget what they've done before. You know, we're not saying he's. I'm not saying that we should forget his contribution and say thanks, Dak, but you are. But when we're picking a team selection, you've got to go with your fittest eleven, your eleven that impact the game the most. There's no doubt he's a better player than Sammy Smaddix in terms of quality. Mm. But in terms of what he brings to the side in a system like this, I don't see him fitting it. And I love Dak. I think everyone loves Dak, don't we? We've seen him for that many years. But yeah, I am getting a bit tired of it. And he, play, he, plays just think... like, he plays as just off the striker or as like yeah. a centre forward or attack he's made just off the striker. And there's no role in this squad, basically, for him. Yeah, I think it. that's... The, that's it at the minute <laughs> and you don't want to change the team for one player and I mean him not to be on the bench is a bit harsh I think that would be the one thing I will say but yeah we're not the manager we don't see him in training so we've not got three wins in a row have we which is Very my true. biggest thing <laughs> if we're winning if we're losing games you know and we say it have been three losses in a row and we'd still kept him out I'd be like well you might as well put him in you know what I'd this is like, like... Jack if it got this, to that point. This is like like the um the, the very small version of Ronaldo not being in the team for United. Yeah, basically, <laughs> isn't it? It's a star player. Everyone knows him. Good and at yeah, the past, but he you know, him. he's come back and he's uh <laughs> It's weird, isn't he's it? He's had a it's, decent shot, but yeah. You know. That's it, and we look at that that's one of them plays that it'll always be what if now, won't it? It'll always be what if he hadn't got that injury. Would he would he have gone up to the Prem, would he have done you know, would he have scored yeah. goals in the Prem, done anything? I think he would have. He definitely would have been in the Prem. Like, he, yeah. he was, like, they were ready to sell him, weren't they, in the summer? That's what they yeah. said. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough one, isn't it? But it's, like I say, we'll definitely do one show on it on the channel, 100%. We'll go for a big panel on it as well, try and get a debate going, do it that way. But, Dom, predictions time. The prediction league's firing up as well, I've seen. A lot of good uh, correct scores as well recently. I've had two as well in the last not three. So. Me, no. Not from me. I'm bragging that. No, not from you. You lagging behind a bit. Go on, go <laughs> prediction for uh, Saturday. Uh, I said 1 0 win. I said a 1 0 win. I think that it will be, a, I don't think it'll be a high score game. It'd be one of them. We've not been good away, have we? We've got, we've got nine points out of eight away from home, three wins, five losses, and we've had a few away trips that have been poor like Wigan and Cardiff and hopefully now like the Middlesbrough one in the first half against a team that has, they've got confidence but have they just got a bit of a caretaker manager boot a bump and then hoping that that's the case um, and it's sort of fizzled out now so I'm going to say Gallagher to score and it's 1-0 I've gone 2-1 and I've also gone Gallagher to score and I've gone for Brereton Diaz uh, for Hull, I don't have a clue who'll score. What happened I'm to you, Morton? You, you, you said you'd be having Morton every I week. Keep, <laughs> I keep getting it wrong. I keep getting the scores. I won't get in the scores earlier in the year, but getting the scores wrong. And I won't get in the score right and the scores wrong. I'll go for... Who's from Hull that has any link to us? I'll go Longman. Mowbray wanted him last January, so I'll go for Did Longman. Right? He's got the okay. tiniest bit of a link. <laughs> I can go through the squad quickly if you want me to. <laughs> no, nah, I'll go for Longman. I'm not changing my mind now. I'll uh, end up talking myself out of it. But that's it. You know, Get your predictions in below. Really appreciate everyone watching, liking, putting the predictions. You know, I enjoy going through the table. The table will be at the end of the show, as it always is from now on. Obviously, we'll keep it going through the season as well. So it's not too late to get in. You know, if you've just started watching... You're on oh, you, definitely. You're I, you're, I'm, I'm on about eight points at the minute, so. <laughs> and Dom's going to finish in the top ten. I'm telling you. So make sure <laughs> you put your scores down below, even if you've not been in before. But until then, do all the stuff we ask you to do all the time. Check out Dom's channel as well. A lot of football stuff going on there. Go on, Dom. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, check out my channel. But I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say every Thursday night we do a, a Thursday night live. Apart from this one, I'm sorry. We do apologise. We were a bit busy. Uh, Danny's still in his work uniform. Like <laughs> that's the reason why we're not doing it right now, as well as you know, like we, we, we you know, I didn't want to just stare at the screen and just talk to comments. That <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that uh, good at that sort of thing. But um, every Thursday night we do a Thursday night live where people can come and comment live. Uh, next week I know we're going to do a um, little uh, sneak peek. Uh, we're going to do a uh, rating FIFA faces against what they actually look like sort of like a tier list so 
that's what we're going to do. But also subscribe to my channel. You know, I, I, I post there by daily. So there, you go. there we are. Going checking out a lot of football based content rather than Rovers based. Even yes. better. So go and check that out. Do everything else. You know, really appreciate support. And we'll be back again for a new video reacting to the whole game and then all the build up coming for the next two weeks two big games on that final week as well so we're looking forward to it but we'll do all that then for now just hit subscribe we really appreciate it